Today, my dad and I are going to show you guys how to build a backyard smoker. Okay. <laughs> Today, we're going to show you how we built this vertical offset smoker from the ground up. We're going to show you guys the material, how much it costs, and how much something like this might sell for. And if it doesn't work, we could always use it as a coffin. <laughs> so the first step in building a custom smoker is to build the base. We're going to be using this 2-inch square tubing, 3 16 inches thick. And we're going to chop this up and show you guys how we build a custom base. Safety first. Right here you'll see me cutting up all that square tubing with our metal cutting chop saw by Evolution Tools. Really makes quick work of all those cuts we got to do. The dimensions for this base are going to be about three and a half feet long by 18 inches deep. Now we're going to slap a sanding wheel on the grinder and bevel these ends. We like to put a little bevel on our pieces that way when you go to weld you're filling in between the two pieces rather than just filling over the top. That way you got a stronger base in the long run. Once all the pieces were beveled it was time to assemble. Went ahead and used our welding magnets to keep everything nice and square. Time to weld it up. We like to tack weld everything together and then once we know it's all nice and square, we give it a full weld. If you guys haven't been here before, this is Father Son DIY Garage. My dad and I, we do DIY projects around the house. Metalworking, woodworking, all kinds of stuff. So if you guys like what you see, give us a subscribe and comment down below, I subscribed. So we're building our firebox out of this 18 inch by 18 inch 3 8 steel plate. So when I line this up and I mark it out here, that's going to show me where I need to put my legs or the cooking chamber. Now we're going to add some supports here at the top to connect all these posts together. We are stick welding this entire project with 6013 electrodes. And as you guys can see, sometimes I have bad habits of not wearing gloves when tack welding, so try not to follow in my footsteps on that. Our total so far is coming out to 100 bucks with the square tubing and now we're going to put the wheel supports on. For our wheel supports we have some 8 inch flat bar that is a half inch thick and what we're going to do is weld that straight to our square tubing and that's going to be nice and strong to hold those wheels on. As you guys can see, we're using some thick steel on this project and laying down a lot of welds. And the reason behind this is that we want this project to last a lifetime. If you take care of this smoker, season it regularly, keep the rust off of it, whether my dad and I own it or someone else does, it should last a lifetime and hopefully be passed down to someone else.
Now that the base is all done, we're gonna weld on some heavy duty casters. These are six inch rubber casters and they're rated for 330 pounds each. So when you put them all together, it's gonna to be over 1300 pounds of weight these can hold. So I'm gonna show you how we weld these on right now. I like to put these as close to the edge as possible. Right there in that corner. After it was tack welded up, I gave it a little spin just to make sure it was all good to go before we put full welds on it. So now that we tested these out with them tack welded, we're going to go ahead and put a full weld around these wheels. And a little trick I like to use to not overheat it is get a wet rag and wrap it around where the bearings are at. And that's going to keep it from overheating. Now it's time to start building the firebox. The first thing I'm gonna do is bevel all these plates, right out the big guns to get it done. We built the firebox for this project out of 3 8 inch steel plate. These pieces are 18 inches by 18 inches, and we decided to go with this measurement because our local steel yard sells these pre-cuts. So it cuts down on a lot of the time of us having to cut up all the steel. We went ahead and assembled this just like a cube, and we're just gonna leave one side off that's going to act as the door. And just like everything else, we're going ahead and tack welding it all up. And then once we like how it looks, we're gonna go ahead and put a full weld on it. Here I am running a full weld on that bottom seam. And then here I am cutting a piece of quarter inch plate that's going to act as a false bottom. You'll see I'm using this angle iron to keep it off of the floor of the firebox. And we're welding that on three inches above the bottom. We got our false bottom installed. Now you can see we have a space for our ceramic fiber insulation. I'm gonna go in there like this. Insulate that bottom. This is really going to hold in the heat for those long cooks. We've been using this 14 inch Evolution chop saw for a while now and we really like it. We like it so much in fact that we reached out to Evolution Tools and asked them if they had an upgrade. And they sent us this beautiful 14 inch miter chop saw. Check this out. This saw has a sliding clamp bar where you can hold down your pieces anywhere you would need them. It also has an extra clamp to hold down your workpiece. And the miter is really easy to use. Just one push of the button and slide over to any angle you desire. This new miter saw makes clean, precision cuts every time. 
and it's a big upgrade from our original Evolution saw. Joe, I guess you could say it's an evolution to the next level of saws. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look in the description for the links to these saws and all the tools that we've used on this project. Now, let's get back to work. And with the insulation in the bottom of the firebox, we went ahead and capped it off with a three inch piece of flat bar. Put a full weld on all the seams. Then I went back with the sanding disc on the grinder and went ahead and ground that flat. Use this little trick to hold that top plate, that way I'm not struggling with it. And once that was nice, I went ahead and tack welded that on and then proceeded to put a full weld. And since we were happy with the way the welds were turning out, we decided to keep some of them rather than sand them off. Alright, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know Joe loves to overbuild stuff. And this project is no exception. Alright. <laughs> Talking costs here, let's start with the wheels. 80 bucks for the four. And then we've got some flat bar here to support those wheels. Another 30 bucks for these two pieces. And with the frame, comes out to a total of 210 bucks for the base. Now it's time to put the firebox on the base. We actually went ahead and took the firebox off because we figured it would be easier to cut the hole to the cooking chamber before we weld it on. Here I am laying out that hole for the cooking chamber with my speed square and cutting it out with a cutting wheel on the grinder. All right, you guys, so our opening from our firebox to our cooking chamber, we made it about twice the size of our smokestack, which is gonna be this four inch square tubing. Once we had a good spot for it, we went ahead and put some welds all the way around, connecting it to the square tubing base. Then we went ahead and put that last steel plate on the side of the firebox. Went ahead and clamped it on. And we're adding two hinges so this entire steel plate will open as the door. Again, tack welding it on just to make sure everything works real nice. And then going back and putting a full weld. Welded a piece of steel plate to the bottom of the base, and this is gonna hold our firewood right underneath the cooking chamber. All right, the firebox costs 350 to make, so that brings our total to 560 bucks. So the first step in making our cooking chamber was to prep our steel plate. This is some four feet tall by two foot wide steel plate, three sixteen inches thick. I cut out some six inch triangles from the top two corners. And I went ahead and slid it over my other piece of plate, traced it out. And I made the exact same cut.
I cut out a few more pieces of 3 16 inch steel plate and those are going to act as the top of the smoker. Use the angle grinder and a circular saw with a metal blade. And when those were all cut up, I went ahead and started to assemble. You'll see I'm using my clamp and tack welding as I go. Our sides are 18 inches wide by about three and a half feet tall. And this piece I'm putting on right here is going to be our door. So I'm just tack welding this on and later on I'm going to go back and cut it off. Those pieces of plate that you saw me cutting up earlier are going to act as the top to make our nice little design. Using that same trick again to get that top piece on. Then went ahead and cut that top piece off. And here's the cooking chamber all tack welded up. We were satisfied with the way everything looked, so I went ahead and put a full weld on all the seams, except for the ones connecting to that front plate. Went ahead and put the smoker on its side just to make it easier to put some welds on it. We've got a couple other smoker builds on our channel, so if you guys like watching these, we'll make sure to link those down below in the description so you guys can check those out as well. Once all the welds were done, we went ahead and cut open the front of the door and slid in the bottom. And we went ahead and tack welded that on. All right, it's time to put this coffin on that base. And if it doesn't work out, Joe could just bury me in this thing. As soon as we got that firebox together, everyone was quick to comment on how it looked like a coffin. Let us know what you guys think. As soon as we got it in the spot we wanted it, I went ahead and started welding it to the firebox and to the base we built. The next step was to add some cooking grate supports to the inside of our cooking chamber for our grates to sit on. We chose inch and a quarter angle iron, 3 16 thick, and we cut these in 16 inch pieces. Using that Evolution chop saw. We went ahead and welded five to one side. We're going to have five grates on this smoker. So we're making sure it's level across here and then that our angle iron on that wall is level too.
Once everything was tack welded up, I went ahead and put some full weld passes on each piece of angle iron to strengthen it up. Here's the latest from Father Son DIY, a coffin on wheels. We got 25 hours into this build so far and it's starting to look like a smoker. <laughs> Hopefully it works. <laughs> For our smokestack, we went ahead and cut up a piece of 4 inch square tubing, about 8 inches long, and a piece of 4 inch flat bar. Welded a hinge between the two. Welded a piece of pipe as a handle. Made sure everything worked good. Then I went ahead and cut out a four inch hole on the top of our cooking chamber, in that, kind of that left side, just so we get that nice flow from the firebox to the chimney. And when that was cut out, I was able to weld on our smokestack. So the first step in building these grates was to put some angle iron on our Evolution chop saw. And the mitering capability of this saw makes it super easy to cut those 45 degree angles and made assembling these a piece of cake. So we're making these just a little bit smaller than the size of the cooking chamber. So instead of 24 by 18, they're about 23 by 17. You'll see I'm lining up those corners with those magnets, making sure everything is nice and square, and like always, putting a nice tack weld on it. And once it's tack welded, went ahead and put a full weld on all the seams. We made three grates this style using one inch angle iron and expanded steel. And you'll see later on in the video, we make some grates out of some solid half inch rod. Once the frames for our grates were all put together, I went ahead and sanded the welds on top nice and flat just to give it a nice finished look. And you'll see here on half of one grate, I'm putting this steel plate. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna act as a smoke slash heat deflector, and that's gonna be the bottom grate, as you'll see later in the video. And the fastest way I've found to cut out this expanded steel is just to lay our frames on the ground, drape it over the top, and you're able to cut it exactly the right length.
With all of our expanded steel cut to size, it was time to weld it on. So for this next style grate, we went ahead and got some half inch rod, cut a bunch of pieces down to 23 inches. And to assemble, you start off by putting two underneath and then kind of rest those 22 inch pieces across the top. Make sure everything's nice and square. Like always, tack weld it up first. And then you want to use one rod as a spacer. So you're pretty much skipping one rod each time, which gives you that nice, great look. These are definitely more heavy duty grates than the expanded steel and will last a hell of a lot longer but they're about three times more expensive to make. For this next grate, we're building it out of three eighths inch rod. We cut two 17 inch pieces and then we cut a bunch of 23 inch pieces. And we're doing the same thing, making sure it's nice and square. Tack welding it up. But instead of skipping one rod on this one, we're going to skip two rods. And the last thing to do for the cooking chamber was to add a drain valve. We had a one inch nipple and we went ahead and put some Teflon on one side, threaded on a one inch valve. Then we cut the threads off one side and went ahead and welded it to the bottom of the cooking chamber. So to start building these door latches, we went ahead and hole sawed a one inch hole. Cut a piece of three inch flat bar, eight inches long. Hole sawed a one inch hole in that. And we decided to add two door latches, that way we have a nice seal on this smoker. 
cut up some more pieces of flat bar for that and for our door handle for the cooking chamber. Cut up some pipe that's going to be used as handles. Then we went ahead and welded a one inch pipe to that eight inch flat bar. And to assemble these, we just used a nut and bolt. Got this off a job site, so it's kind of cool to see that in one of my home projects. Tighten that up. And once we made sure it worked good, went ahead and welded it all together. That way it's permanent. Then I went into making the door handle for the main cooking chamber. Welded a piece of 3 inch flat bar there. Put our piece of pipe in between and welded another piece of flat bar on top of that. Then went ahead and put full welds all the way around. Once that was all done, went ahead and notched out those latches. Welded a piece of flat bar to the front of the cooking chamber. And that's what the latch is going to close onto. Went ahead and used some 2 inch square tubing that we had left over from the base to make a handle for our firebox. See I'm cutting some 45 degree miters on that and then welding it up real nice. And I went ahead and welded that to the firebox door. And with all the work done, it was cleanup time. A little trick I like to use to get that welding splatter off is to use a putty knife or in this case a taping knife. Scrape all that stuff off. Then I went ahead and wire wheeled every single weld that we made on the smoker. Made sure you get all that slag off and all that dust and all that. And then it was time to add some gauges. Went ahead and used a step bit to make my hole big enough to fit my gauge into. Slid it on in, put that backing nut on. And we did that twice, one for the top and one for the middle. Now for this next part, put on your best working shorts and get ready to shoot some spray. <laughs> We're going to use this pressure washer to clean out the inside and we'll see if it works. Might get rusty, might not. We're going to dry it off real quick. Let's see what happens before we oil it up. We're going to clean it. With all the other miscellaneous stuff on this project like welding rod, grinder discs, and these gauges, the total comes out to about $1,100 to build at about 40 hours of work. So our sell point for this smoker would be around $2,500. One of the final steps is to put this smoker gasket on because the door closes right onto the frame of the cooking chamber. And this is gonna keep in all of the smoke and the heat throughout those long cooks. Once the smoker was complete, we went ahead and seasoned it up with some canola oil. And you'll see here we threw some ribs on to start enjoying all of our hard work. Well, there you have it. An in-depth look on how we built this vertical offset smoker. This was a really cool build for us because we dreamed this whole project up ourselves. 
and it was cool to see it come together. Hey, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.